Welcome. Today's episode is going to be a little bit off topic, um, but I really am working on some computer related stuff. It's just taking a little while. So in the meantime, uh, because most of my followers are uh, geeks and nerds, no offense intended, um, I think that you will appreciate what I'm about to show you. So I've actually uh, never understood really the appeal of comic books. I, mean, I tried reading a few years ago and they just seemed to be mostly a bunch of pictures depicting fight scenes. I honestly felt like I might as well be watching an episode of the Power Rangers or something. But as I became addicted to the show The Big Bang Theory, I kept noticing how all of the main characters liked going to the comic book store. And so I decided to find my nearest comic book store and try it out one more time. I walked the aisles and I saw all of the usual stuff like Batman, Spider-Man, X-Men, etc. And I tried opening a few up and looking through them and honestly I still just didn't find the appeal to these. I was just about to leave when something caught my eye. It was Futurama. I'm a huge fan of the TV series so I opened it up and after just about 60 seconds I knew I was going to like reading it so I bought my first comic book and I took it home. Reading it was almost like watching the TV show and I could even hear the characters' voices in my head as I read through it. On Batman's night off. Oh, hey, Fry Lila. Dander? Once I realized there were over 70 new episodes of Futurama that I'd never seen before, I had to start collecting them all. I also wanted to show you an interesting comparison I made between reading a graphic novel, which is a fancy word for a big comic book, and then reading a traditional novel. So I decided to use this Harry Potter book as an example. I took a chapter from the book and painstakingly counted up all of the words used in a chapter. And then I tried to sort the words into different categories, and here's what I found. If this pie graph represents all of the words, I found that 46% of them were for dialogue. These are basically words that tell what the characters are actually saying to each other. Here's an example of what I'm talking about, where Ron is talking to Harry. Back to the graph here, I found that 36% of the words were describing action. By this I mean the words that are describing what the characters are actually doing, such as this example about chocolate frogs. And the last 18% were words used to describe the environment, basically what everything around the characters looks like, such as this example describing what Harry sees through the window of the train. I also found that you could really even cut this dialogue section even smaller because a lot of the words here are useless words that simply tell the reader who is speaking and then other words that explain in what tone of voice the character says it. So I took an additional 15% from this, reducing dialogue down to about 31%. Now, when reading a comic book, you still have the same amount of dialogue, but you're replacing all of this with illustrations. This way, we can visually see the environment, what's going on with the characters, what expressions are on the characters' faces, and so on. And as a result, you really do get more information, because you know what they say, I mean, a picture really is worth a thousand words. And since there are fewer words to read, the story moves along a lot faster. It's more like reading a, a movie than it is, you know, a novel. So after I finished reading all of the Futurama stories, I actually discovered that there were other comics I liked as well. For example, Star Wars, Star Trek, Doctor Who, Ghostbusters, and even my 12 year old daughter has now become addicted to the My Little Pony comic books and she is starting to collect them all herself. Okay, so one piece of advice I will give you though. Um, some comics, uh, like these Futurama for example, um, are very individual stories, much like the TV series. You, you really don't have to follow them in any particular order. Um, on the other hand, some other comics like these are very serial by nature and if you don't start with the first issue of a particular story then you won't be able to figure out what's going on. Some of them will explain this to you on the front, like this one that says it's basically one part of a six part series. Now other comics don't explain that and you actually have to go to like Google and try to figure out where the next new story begins so that you don't find yourself confused. And personally, I like getting what are sometimes referred to as trade issues or soft covers. So in these, they'll put an entire story arc into a single book, which is typically four to six issues combined. But then there are even hard covers like this Ghostbusters book, which crams 16 issues into a single book. And of course you can actually read comics digitally, you can download them either legally or illegally, but uh, if you happen to own a first generation iPad, they still work great for reading comic books as a screen is the perfect size and the slower CPU doesn't really affect this activity. So I would encourage you if you've never actually tried reading comics, then go down to your local comic shop and pick a few up. If you browse long enough, I guarantee you, you will find something that you like, even if it's not uh, the mainstream comics that you always hear about. 
So the next video is back to being computer related. Uh, in the meantime, um, I encourage you to connect with me on Facebook and uh, share your ideas with me and uh, see what's coming up next. Thanks for watching.